Hair is an important aspect of your self-image and also the image that you project to the world at large. And I guess hair loss is something which all of us would have contended with to some aspect, a significant or even a distressing degree at some point of our lives. So I'm Dr. Soumya Jagadishan, Associate Professor and Consultant Dermatologist, Amrita Hospital, Kochi, and I'm here to share and discuss some aspects of hair loss and hair care in the hope that it would empower you in dealing with this particular problem. When we deal with hair loss, it's important to ascertain whether it is predominantly hair shedding or hair thinning that we are dealing with. Yes, both these problems may coexist together, but what is predominant is often helpful to decide on the treatment aspects as well. So when we take about, uh, talk about hair shedding, it is also important to know what is abnormal shedding and what is normal shedding. Particularly in, this, uh, circumstance, in these circumstances where we are dealing with a lot of post-COVID hair loss, this is a condition again where we see a lot of abnormal hair shedding, sudden abnormal hair shedding. Normal shedding does occur for all of us. Uh, we do say often that 50 to 100 hairs Losing those hairs are normal. There's nothing concrete like that. But why do we say this? It's because your hair basically exists in three phases in your scalp. The anagen or the growth phase, which would constitute around 90% of the hairs. The catagen, the intervening phase, which only constitutes around 1%. And the telogen hairs, which are the shedding hairs, which constitutes about 10%. So when you are suffering from a COVID infection or any other severe viral infections or acute stress or surgery or childbirth or things like that, what happens is that a significant proportion of your hairs get converted to the shedding phase or the telogen phase. So instead of the 90s to 10 ratio, you have higher proportion of hairs entering the telogen or the shedding phase simultaneously. And this will result in a sudden and increased shedding of hair. And uh, since the telogen phase lasts for around three months, there is usually a lag between the stressor or the infection that you experienced and the hair, hair loss, the onset of hair loss. Usually there's a two to three month lag between the onset of hair loss and this particular inciting event. So when you're dealing with post-COVID hair loss particularly, it's important to know that this is a transient phenomenon and that the hair, hair loss usually subsides spontaneously in three to six months. But what do you need to do? You need to ascertain that the hair loss is due to COVID itself or the what we call the telogen effluvium associated with COVID or the other inciting events. And that there is no coexisting other issues like a nutritional deficiency or a thyroid disorder or a vitamin D deficiency and things like that. So it's important to get an opinion regarding the diagnosis. And if the doctor suggests, it is also important to get supplements or other uh, agents for your hair care as prescribed by the your doctor or the dermatologist. The other causes for increased hair shedding can be often, uh, like we discussed, the nutritional causes because hair is a very sensitive or a demanding part of your body and it has high nutritional requirement, especially iron, zinc, many vitamins, minerals, etc. But since it doesn't perform a very metabolically important function, you need to have high levels of these nutrients or these stores so that the health and growth of hair is maintained. So it's important uh, that when you contend with a significant amount of hair shedding, what we discussed earlier was an acute kind of hair loss, acute erogen effluvium in the, in, in the event of an inciting event. But you may also develop a chronic kind of hair loss where you lose more than the normal amount of hair on a long term basis. So in such conditions, we always suspect whether there is an under underlying nutritional deficiency or an underlying stress which could also affect your hair loss, hair growth and hair uh, maintenance of the health of your hair. Of course, other issues like hormonal diseases, your thyroid disorders, so many things can affect this uh, hair shedding and cause an increased conversion to your telogen or the shedding phase. So this is in nutshell about uh, conditions where you have increased hair shedding. Certain medications can also cause increased hair shedding. So it's important to consult a good uh, your dermatologist to make sure uh, and rule out the possibilities, rule out the uh, 
you know your health conditions which may be also contributing to uh, hair shedding. Now when we talk about thinning of hair, this occurs due to a different set of reasons usually. We can see thinning of hair in both males and females though we know it more about more about it in males where you see what we call the balding of hair or a, due to a hormonal cause predominantly. Uh, this occurs when the diameter of your hair shaft that reduces and the normal thick terminal hair that you see on the scalp it becomes thinner and becomes almost not unlike your body hair. So here the predominant reason is hormonal we see it in males uh, especially after puberty in adolescence and it usually starts by you know the hair uh, what we call the recession receding hairline especially on your temples and then later it involves the whole of the frontal aspect the crown and it can also be uh, it can also slowly or uh, even uh, advance past and involve a significant part of the hairline. So in these kind of hormonal uh, hair loss or the thinning of hair you also usually see a patterning. Uh, the hair loss is not significant you may not see a significant degree of shedding of hair but there is a patterned hair loss where the back part of your hair is unaffected and the anterior or the frontal part is more affected. So uh, as I said earlier this is predominantly due to hormonal reasons and unlike what we think there are a lot of treatment options available for dealing with this condition the balding of scalp. There are hormonal uh, treatments that are available uh, there are topical uh, creams and lotions which we can apply which can actually prevent this progression of this condition to a significant degree there are other surgical options so many platelet rich plasma treatments so many options that are available that can actually deal with preventing the progression of balding. So, but of course it is important that you deal with it in the beginning itself and not wait for before losing a lot of hairs then it becomes difficult to treat such condition. And also this kind of hormonal hair loss or balding is not only seen in men it is also seen very commonly in women though sometimes it is difficult to diagnose or you may not realize that what you are dealing with this kind of a hormonal hair loss or a what we call the female pattern hair loss where there is again a patterning of hair loss and you see more of the hair loss around the central aspect of the scalp or the vertex and it usually begins with a thin a widening of your partition and here again it is not purely hormonal there are a lot of other factors factoring in like uh, deficiencies and many such things. Again these can be treated and you should take um, help from your dermatologist or your treating uh, doctor so that this can be dealt with, uh, dealt with at the earliest. There are other important but less common causes of hair loss also. One of it is alopecia areata uh, or a patchy kind of hair loss which is more common in children though it can involve any age group where you start losing hair in patches and these patches can also progress and involve the entirety of the scalp, eyebrows and even body hair. This alopecia areata is often due to an autoimmune cause and it can be treated very well. So it's important to diagnose and start treatment in the early phases itself. Uh, other causes of hair loss which can cause permanent and irre irreversible loss of hair include scarring alopecias which could be caused by diseases like lupus or lichen planus, infections etc. Now besides these conditions uh, which are the commonest cause of hair loss there are also certain myths and misconceptions prevalent regarding uh, hair loss. One important factor is that even the normal balding or the hormonal hair loss are often attributed to other causes. For example wearing a helmet. This is some misconception that we have dealt with and we have seen encountered very commonly in our practice. Yes, uh, wearing a helmet can cause hair loss in certain rare circumstances but that is extremely uncommon. If you do not wear your helmets, uh, if you do not deal with them in a hygienic manner, make sure that uh, the wetness is uh, not there and clean it properly, this can lead to fungal infections and can lead to hair loss or even the pressure due to the straps can cause a localized kind of hair loss in that area. Other than that helmets causing diffuse hair loss is largely a misconception. Similarly another uh, misconception is regarding the uh, uh, seborrheic dermatitis or dandruff. Yes seborrheic dermatitis when excessive and when there is a degree of micro inflammation can cause hair loss and it is important that you cleanse your scalp uh, and use uh, prescribed shampoos 
uh, to an appropriate in, in an appropriate frequency and in the dose that is prescribed by your doctor. It is also important that you continue using them because these randal for seborrheic dermatitis is predominantly a physiological condition. Most of us have it, it is due to the excessive sebum production, the oil production from your oil glands in the scalp or due to the flaking of skin. This can occur in dry weather or even in wet weather, but it may not cause a significant degree of hair loss. So before attributing your hair loss to these conditions, it is important to diagnose what is the actual cause so that you do not miss out on them and you, I mean, you are given proper treatment for the same. So before I um, end this discussion, I would also take a minute to tell you about the hair care practices, the type of shampoo that you use, the conditioner that you use. All these things are important, uh, I do not have the time to go into the details, but the shampoo or the cleansing regime should depend upon the uh, condition that your hair is in. Like you have different kinds of shampoos that are available, actually shampoos that are even attributed magical properties, right? But basically a shampoo is nothing but a cleanser. So if you are living in a very hot and humid weather and you are just back after an exercise, you need a proper shampoo, a good shampoo with a good uh, strong surfactant to make sure that you cleanse the dirt from your hair. Uh, in such cases, you have to use a, a shampoo with a strong surfactant. Whereas, if you are intending daily uh, a shampoo for a daily use, it is always better to go for a mild uh, surfactant shampoo. Uh, the shampoos which are generally you know, labeled as sulfur free. So it is imperative that you pick and choose your shampoo depending upon the condition that your hair is in and the weather conditions that are prevailing and not stick to a single product, that is important because shampoos can cause dryness of hair and can also cause damage to the hair shaft and it is important that after each shampoo use, you use a conditioner separately. Another point that I want to make is that colouring your hair, relaxing your hair, perming your hair, all these things do cause hair damage and on the long term it does cause hair loss, it is just that the extent varies. So if you are somebody who is already dealing with issues with your hair, it is important that you get an opinion from your treating dermatologist before making these decisions. It is important to make an informed decision. So I hope that the points that we have discussed today would help you make much more informed and better decisions. I wish you all happy hair days. Thank you.